called here relative viscosity then we discuss about uh, variation of viscosity with temperature variation of viscosity with temperature now let's see how does a viscosity changes with the temperature it is different for liquids and uh, gases variation of viscosity for liquids and gases is different now whenever temperature increased uh, for liquids what happens to the viscosity what happens to the viscous force as temperature increases liquids expands as liquids expand the separation between the molecules increases as separation increases cohesive force decreases if cohesive force decreases then viscous force between the two layers of liquid decreases means for liquids for liquids uh, viscous force decreases because due to the expansion separation between the molecules increases as separation increases cohesive force decreases so that viscosity viscous force or viscosity decreases in case of gases what happens as temperature increases the energy of the molecules also increases so that the exchange of momenta between the molecules of uh, gas will be increased as exchange of momenta increased uh, then viscosity also increased so here variation of viscosity with temperature for liquids and gases is opposite in case of liquids uh, viscous force decreases with temperature in case of gases as we increase the temperature viscous force increases why because in case of gases if temperature increased uh, exchange of momenta between the molecules of the gas will be increased that is the reason why in case of gases viscous force increases with the temperature now we discuss about a uh, stokes law <clears throat> what stokes law states here the stokes law gives the formula for viscous force acting on a object whenever it is falling down a fluid column whenever an object is falling down uh, in a fluid column it uh, the formula for viscous force is given by the stokes law stokes law gives the formula for viscous force acting on an object whenever it is falling on a liquid column or fluid column suppose uh, this is a liquid column or fluid column now this is the object means a sphere having a the sphere having a radius r and its density is rho for the fluid its density is rho not suppose okay as uh, this fluid is a uh, this sphere is falling down then the sphere drags the layers of fluid along with it means uh, um, between the adjacent layers the motion is set up if the motion is set up means uh, between the adjacent layers of the fluid if the motion is set up then viscous force starts to act so the viscous force uh, acts in the upward direction fv and fv viscous force acts in the upward direction this viscous force is given by the formula according to the scientist stoker uh, the viscous force is directly proportional to the quotient of viscosity of the fluid here for the fluid if the quotient of viscosity is eta then viscous force directly proportional to the viscous force acting on the body in upward direction is directly proportional to the quotient of viscosity eta and viscous force directly proportional to the radius of the sphere which is falling down and viscous force directly proportional to the velocity of the sphere which is falling down with what velocity sphere is falling down as the velocity increases uh, viscous force also increases now the stoke given the relation like this here viscous force directly proportional to the quotient of uh, viscosity of the fluid viscous force directly proportional to the radius of the sphere and viscous force directly proportional to the velocity with which the sphere is falling down in the fluid column now by combining all these equations we write f fv proportional to eta rv now we introduce a constant fv is equal to 6 pi eta rv this is the formula for viscous force acting on the <coughs> sphere which is falling in a fluid column fv is equal to 6 pi eta rv next uh, we derive the formula for terminal velocity whenever this uh, sphere is falling down in a fluid column we derive the formula for terminal velocity 
Now generally if you observe, as the sphere is falling down in the fluid column, the velocity is gradually increasing. As the velocity is increasing, the viscous force also increases. Along with the viscous force, uh, two more forces act on the sphere. What are the forces here? Suppose uh, <coughs> mass of the sphere is m, then its weight mg, w is equal to mg, act vertically down. Along with it, uh, it experiences an upward force called uh, buoyant force Fb buoyant force fb also act in the upward direction means here totally three forces acting on each one is viscous force in upward direction second is buoyant force in upward direction in downward direction weight is w here even the two forces fb and fv buoyant force and viscous force are acting in upward direction the sphere is falling down the sphere is falling down means it is experiencing result resultant downward force means a downward force weight is greater than the sum of the forces fb and fv in upward direction means a W is greater than Fb plus Fv. So the resultant downward force is given by W minus Fb plus Fv. Now th this resultant downward force produces an acceleration it, uh, in it. Suppose it is falling down with acceleration A, then according to Newton's second law, we can write that F is equals to m a. Resultant force is equal to mass into acceleration. m is the mass of the sphere, a is the acceleration produced in downward direction, m a is equal to resultant force W minus uh, F B plus F V. So acceleration produced in the sphere in downward direction, a is equals to W minus of uh, F B plus F V by m this much is acceleration is produced in downward direction actually what happens here as the sphere is falling down here the velocity is increasing as the velocity increases viscous force also increases as viscous force increases here the upward force increases fb plus fv upward force increases means the value fb plus fv is increasing as fb plus fv is increasing a moment comes then W is equal to Fb plus Fv. As velocity is increasing at a particular velocity called terminal velocity, when velocity is equal to terminal velocity, then what is happening here? A downward force is equal to become equal to upward force. As it is falling down, velocity is increasing at a particular velocity called terminal velocity, Fb plus Fv become equal to W. As velocity increases, viscous force increases. If viscous force increases, this value increases. This value become equal to W when velocity is equal to the terminal velocity. As it is falling down at a particular maximum velocity called terminal velocity, the total downward force is equal to the total upward force. Then its acceleration become zero. Acceleration becomes zero. Acceleration becomes zero means uh, it fall down with uniform velocity. What is the uniform velocity here? That is terminal velocity and that is constant here. V t is equal to constant. Now when the sphere attained terminal velocity, then acceleration is zero. Acceleration zero means W is equal to Fb plus Fv. The condition is that W is equal to Fb plus Fv. Now what is the formula for weight? That is a m into g. Fb, <coughs> buoyant force, buoyant force is given by the formula rho L into G into V, V is the volume of the sphere and Fv, Fv is the 6 pi eta R V, here M is the mass, mass of the sphere and here we suppose density of fluid is rho L. Now, m is the mass of the sphere mass of the sphere can be written in terms of its density its density is a uh, rho so <coughs> density is equal to density rho is equal to for sphere mass by its volume v now m is equal to rho into its volume v so we write instead of m rho into v into g is equal to rho l into g into v plus a 6 pi eta rv now taking rho l g with this sign now gv is cancel, uh, common then uh, 6 pi eta rv is equal to gv is common here we get a rho minus rho l into g into v what is capital v here capital v is the density of volume of the sphere here so we write 6 pi eta rv is equal to here velocity is thermal velocity vt is equal to rho minus rho l into 
g into v is the volume of the sphere volume of the sphere is uh, 4 by 3 pi r cube so on both sides pi is cancelled 2 2 ja, 2 3 ja, 1 r is cancelled r square remains here so it here 3 eta vt is vt is remained that is equals to rho minus rho l into g into 2 by 3 r square is remained now 3 comes here 3 3 ja, 9 now i can write 2 by 9 r square g into rho minus rho l by eta or we can also write 2 by 9 into r square g into rho minus rho l by eta it's a formula for terminal velocity terminal velocity vt obtained by the sphere falling down in an fluid column is a vt is equal to 2 by 9 into r square g into rho minus rho l by eta it can also be applicable for velocity thermal velocity obtained by raindrops when they are falling down an atmosphere here rho l is the density of the atmosphere and rho is the density of the water and rho is the radius of the <coughs> water uh, sphere and g is the acceleration due to gravity eta is the coefficient of viscosity of the atmosphere and v is the terminal velocity obtained by the raindrop okay by substituting all these values we can find the terminal velocity of the raindrop attained when it is falling in the atmosphere then we discuss about a uh, reynolds number <coughs> Using the Reynolds number, we can using a using the value of Reynolds number, we can identify the type of the fluid flow, whether it is a turbulent flow or a steady flow, or it is a changing between turbulent and a steady flow. Now, the Reynolds number is given by the formula R n is equal to rho v d by eta what is rho here rho is the density of the fluid v is the velocity of the fluid d is the diameter of the tube of flow diameter of the tube of flow in which a fluid is flowing and eta is the coefficient of viscosity of the fluid now if a rn value reynolds number value is less than 1000 the fluid flow is a steady flow by substituting uh, all the values here we get the Reynolds number if the value is less than 1000 uh, then we understand the fluid flow is a uh, steady flow if the Rn value is uh, greater than 2000 the fluid flow is a uh, turbulent if the Rn value Reynolds number value is greater than 2000 then the fluid flow is turbulent flow if Rn value is in between 1000 and 2000 then the fluid flow switches in between steady and turbulent it means uh, it changes in between steady and uh, turbulent if the Reynolds number value is in between uh, 1000 and 2000 then the fluid flow changes itself in between uh, steady and uh, turbulent flow in this way by using the value of Reynolds number we can identify the type of the fluid flow here from this we can find the terminal velocity critical velocity of the fluid flow also if the fluid if the Reynolds number is greater than 2000 by substituting here we can find the critical velocity also 